Aztec Xanthin has become one of the staples in my own supplement stack and it's gotten a lot of attention from longevity researchers. That's mostly because last year in 2023, the National Institute of Aging Interventions Testing Program saw that astaxanthin extended the lifespan of male mice by 12%. I'm at a point where I'm not taking any random supplements unless they have actual evidence that they would work. And animal studies alone aren't enough for me. So in this video, I'm going to go through the research of why I'm taking astaxanthin and what's the optimal dose. First, what is astaxanthin? Astaxanthin is a carotenoid, or specifically a ketocarotenoid, that gives salmon their pink color. It's a metabolite of other common carotenoids like zeaxanthin and cantaxanthin. Carotenoids are different colored pigments, such as yellow, orange, or red, that you can find in pumpkins, carrots, lobster, shrimp, flamingos, corn, and tomatoes. Let's begin with the 2023 Interventions Testing Program study. They saw that astaxanthin extended male mice lifespan by 12%. The Interventions Testing Program program is considered to be the highest standard for life extension research in animals at the moment. That's why a lot of people got interested in astaxanthin. Another 2019 study on roundworms saw that astaxanthin extended lifespan by 20% by affecting mitochondrial function. Now, we can't draw any conclusions about the longevity effects of astaxanthin on humans from these studies. What we can do is look at the clinical trials done on astaxanthin and see if it has any benefits on various aspects of health and longevity, such as cardiovascular vascular disease risk, skin aging, and metabolic health. Fortunately, there have been many randomized controlled trials in humans using astaxanthin, and it's seen to have anti-inflammatory, cardioprotective, and neuroprotective qualities. Let's take a look at these studies. One of the most promising effects of astaxanthin is its anti-inflammatory effects. Astaxanthin's ORAC score, which measures antioxidant potential, is an astonishing 2.8 million, which is up to 6,000 times greater than vitamin C, 800 times greater than CoQ10, and 550 times greater than vitamin E. Astaxanthin scavenges free radicals and activates an antioxidant pathway called NRF2, which supports glutathione, the body's master antioxidant. This maintains lower inflammation levels throughout the body and maintains the integrity of the blood brain barrier, which protects the brain against neuroinflammation. Are there any clinical trials looking at the effects of astaxanthin on inflammation? This 2022 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that astaxanthin supplementation was able to significantly reduce markers of inflammation such as IL-6 and malondialdehyde. The effects were particularly significant in type 2 diabetes patients. The effects on CRP and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which are other inflammatory proteins, were not significant in this study. However, another 2020 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that astaxanthin supplementation resulted in a reduction in CRP and an increase in HD HDL cholesterol if taken at a dose of over 12 milligrams a day for over 12 weeks. They found no effects on fasting blood sugar, total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, or blood pressure. One of the main ways astaxanthin's anti-inflammatory effects manifest is through the protection of skin against UV radiation. Astaxanthin's high antioxidant value makes it effective for protecting against UV radiation and photoaging. A 2021 systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that oral astaxanthin supplementation 2 to 12 milligrams a day for 4 to 16 weeks was able to improve skin moisturization and elasticity, but not reduce wrinkle depth. Another 2021 review of clinical trials saw that a dose of 3 to 6 milligrams a day of astaxanthin had benefits for photo-aged skin. In middle-aged volunteers, taking 4 milligrams of astaxanthin per day for 4 weeks was seen to reverse age-related morphological changes of the facial skin, especially in obese individuals. So a dose of up to 12 milligrams a day might be protective for skin aging although there doesn't appear to be any direct effects on wrinkles. An additional mechanism of astaxanthin for skin anti-aging has to do with senescent cells. Astaxanthin has senolytic properties, which means it can eliminate these pro-inflammatory senescent cells that accumulate during aging. One of the potential mechanisms for that is the induction of autophagy. What about metabolic health? Astaxanthin also has beneficial effects on lipid metabolism and blood pressure. There's a 2022 meta-analysis of 14 epidemiological studies that show that astaxanthin supplementation lowers total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, blood pressure, and blood glucose, and it also increased HDL cholesterol. Those are the favorable cardiometabolic effects you would want. Now, these were epidemiological studies, and as of now, this review hasn't been peer-reviewed. However, we have a few meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials showing that azaxanthin has similar benefits. 
A 2022 meta-analysis and review of clinical trials concluded that astaxanthin significantly lowers LDL cholesterol and marginally reduces total cholesterol and systolic blood pressure. Another 2021 meta-analysis of clinical trials found that astaxanthin supplementation significantly lowered diastolic blood pressure, but had no significant effect on systolic blood pressure. The effects were also greater in those who were less healthy and in the Asian population. So there is some evidence that astaxanthin supplementation could lower LDL cholesterol levels. The effects on total cholesterol and blood pressure appear to be non-significant or only evident in people who have elevated cholesterol or elevated blood pressure. What's the dose of astaxanthin for these effects? The effective dose appears to be somewhere between 2 to 12 milligrams a day for several weeks when we also take into account the skin benefits. Can you get this amount of astaxanthin from just food? Astaxanthin is most known to be found in salmon and shrimp because these animals are pink or red color. That's true, salmon, trout and shrimp all have astaxanthin. However, astaxanthin is produced by microalgae, yeast and certain bacteria when they're exposed to certain stressors like excessive sunlight, lack of nutrients or increase in salinity of their environment. Salmon, trout, shrimp and flamingos feed on these algae that then increase their own pigmentation. The astaxanthin content of different foods goes in order of this. Salmonids have the lowest amount, then come plankton and krill, arctic shrimp, yeast and algae is the highest source. Here are the approximate concentrations of astaxanthin in different salmon species. Sockeye salmon 26 to 38 milligrams per kilogram, Atlantic salmon 6 to 8 milligrams per kilogram, and trout 6 milligrams per kilogram. To get 4 milligrams of astaxanthin, you need to consume about 180 grams of salmon or 720 grams for the 12 milligram dose. Algae species have significantly higher amounts of astaxanthin, up to 1 milligram per gram, which is up to 38 times more than in salmon. The most concentrated Concentrated astaxanthin is in a species of algae called Haematococcus pluvialis. It can be compromised of up to 7% astaxanthin, which would mean that to get 12 milligrams of astaxanthin from this, you would need 171 milligrams a day. That's a pretty small amount. So there are indeed ways to get astaxanthin from food. The problem is that to get the optimal 12 milligram dose, you would need to consume quite a large amount of food, up to 720 grams of salmon. The microalgae can be a lot easier, about 170 milligrams would give you the 12 milligram dose. However, taking 12 milligrams as a supplement is also shown to provide benefits in clinical trials. In conclusion, I think that astaxanthin is one of the most interesting supplements out there right now. The biggest benefit for a healthy person is protecting the skin against UV damage and lowering inflammation. People with worse metabolic health could also experience benefits related to lipids and blood pressure. Check out this video about another popular longevity supplement called Taurine. And if you want to get my free supplement list, then check out the link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.